let's discuss just a few more technical details of this hierarchical decomposition process, and then we will quickly move on to the topic of creating data flow diagrams. Okay, so there is a particular data diagram numbering protocol that helps the viewer, the user, understand what level you're at and what process you're talking about. So correctly numbering each process using this specific numbering scheme among the different levels helps the user understand where the process fits into the overall hierarchy. So context diagram is process zero. The next level down is level zero processes, and those processes on the level zero diagram are numbered one, two, three, four, etc. Level one processes always have one dot, parent number dot, unique number, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, corresponding to the level zero processes numbers on the right of the dot. Level two processes always have two dots, 1.1.1, 1.1.2, 1.1.3, .1 etc. Process descriptions are pretty straightforward. It's the text-based process descriptions using English language provide more information about the process than the DFD alone. Case tools like Visible Analyst allow you to input descriptions as you're making the processes. And if the logic underlying the process is quite complex, you might possibly use um, some other tools such as structured English, decision trees, decision tables, but these really are not necessary. So you see on this slide just simply a, um, a case, a computer-aided software, a visible analyst box that opens up so you can enter in the number, the description, process description of the individual processes as you see here. So let's move on to creating data flow diagrams. There's a really good example of creating a process description in Visible Analyst on page 163 of the text. I, I highly recommend you look at that. And there's a good extended example of drawing the context diagram, level zero, level one, for so-called holiday travel vehicle sales system that begins on page 164 in the text. I, I recommend you take a look at that extended example beginning on page 164. So we're trying to put some structure on this process of building DFDs. And there are steps. You do things in a particular order, which makes it easier to understand and to do. First, you build the context diagram and identify the external entities and the major flows, the inflows they supply and the outflows the, ent the external entities receive. Then you identify all major processes encompassed by the context diagram. And finally, you create DFD fragments for each event use case. That is each major event from the major processes and company encompassed on the con context diagram can be handled by a use case. And so the DFD fragments, it's a mini diagram showing the process and the external entities and data stores with which it interacts. Then after building the context diagram, then after building the context diagram, you organize the DFD fragments into a level zero diagram. Decompose each level zero process into a level one diagram, decompose the level ones into level two as needed and so forth. And then you need to check it over for quality and validate the DFDs with the user. Now, there's a close relationship between use cases and process modeling. DFDs start with events, use cases, and the requirements definition. Generally, the DFD will flow directly from the use cases. So the names of the use cases on your on your top level use case diagram become the major processes on the level zero diagram in your DFD set. The steps in the use case, how you actually implement the use case, become the processes on the level one diagram. And the inputs and outputs 
for the level one diagram become data flows on the level one diagram. For example, like this. And this begins on page 164. This is that holiday travel vehicle sales system. It's very good. Um, you ought to take a look at this. And um, it, it really ties it all together. So that's what I recommend.